From MTN News, this is Montana This Morning. Good morning and welcome to Montana This Morning on this Tuesday, June 28th. Our top story, a potential bombshell could be coming this morning. The House Select Committee investigating the January 6th attack is holding a surprise hearing today. After not planning any more hearings until July, the committee says it will now present newly obtained evidence. It's unclear what the panel will show, but it did recently obtain unseen footage from a documentarian with access to former President Trump in the days leading up to January 6th. The committee will convene at 11 a.m. Meanwhile, the Supreme Court is again ruling in favor of religious plaintiffs. In this case, a former high school football coach sued his Washington State School District, claiming it violated his constitutional rights when it told him to stop praying with students midfield after games. The majority opinion reaffirms the ex-coach's First Amendment rights, while the dissent warns of a disservice to the country's long-standing separation of church and state. Happening today, Ghislaine Maxwell is set to be sentenced in Manhattan federal court. She was found guilty of helping Jeffrey Epstein abuse girls between 1994 and 2004. Prosecutors say she deserves at least 30 years in prison. And now it is time for a check of the weather with Miller and it's Tuesday and mm. I hear it's going to be a hot day. It is definitely going to be hot. Absolutely. Some of us getting into the mid 90s, if not hotter. Now it's a good day to get outside if you want to get some sunshine to start, but you want to, of course, keep yourself hydrated and be sure to slap on the sunscreen. Later in the afternoon and into the evening, things will change. We have the possibility of seeing some strong to severe weather. I'll break that down with the main forecast coming up. Crunch some numbers. Yesterday, we called a high of 85, and boom, that's exactly what we got. A few degrees above the norm. Overnight low down to about 52, just below average. Top gust yesterday at 15. We're going to see some stronger winds today at times with those storms rolling through. Of course, no precipitation yesterday. Just turned out to be a beautiful day. For the month, we've got 2.85 inches. For the year, 9.38 inches. And, of course, we're pacing ahead in both those categories. May add to that today with that change chance of seeing some rain. Just a beautiful start this morning here across Yellowstone County. A great shot from the Stockman Bank weather cam. 56 at the airport. Winds out of the southwest at about 13 miles an hour. Temperatures in the 50s and 60s across the area as we start with a lot of 90s today before things start really getting interesting weather-wise later today into this evening. We'll take a look coming up. All right, always interesting in Montana, it summer sure nights, is. barbecuing. You never know if you're yeah. going to get that severe weather, unless if, of course, you download the app for sure. Q2. Oh, look at that. Plug <laughs> the away. The weather Plug app. Away. I like you got to do it. I've already gotten alerts this morning. <laughs> cool. So, all right. That's what it's there for. Thanks a lot, Miller. Okay. Well, Montana's legislative leaders are working to fix ongoing issues at the Montana State Hospital. A team of consultants is in Warm Springs identifying problems and offering solutions. MTN's Jonathan Amberian tells us what they've learned. On Monday, the contractors brought in to do an assessment of state-run health care facilities told state lawmakers about challenges they've identified and progress that's been made at the Montana State Hospital. Diane Rafferty and Christopher Baglio are from the firm Alvarez and Marsal. Montana DPHHS hired them to work on long-term strategic plans for seven state facilities, including the state hospital. The facility at Warm Springs has faced ongoing safety and staffing concerns, and state leaders have been working on ways to address them. These are issues that have been long-standing and building over time, and so as we're working towards that kind of lasting change, uh, which is gonna take time. We're also looking for short-term wins, so opportunities where we can, we can show some improvement now. Speaking to a legislative interim committee Monday, Rafferty and Baglio acknowledged the continuing challenge of recruiting nurses and other staff, and said there's been a lack of needed staff training. They said one big issue has been a lack of the data they'd need to track quality improvement. Those metrics have never been measured. So it's hard to say what success looks like if you've never measured it. One positive they identified was the commitment of the hospital's staff. The people that are, are still there really care about their patients and are proud to come to work every day. And when they see things in the press and they see the bad things, it's been hard on their morale. And many of those, many of those staff will stay. So it's our job to get them trained, get them competent, look at the care delivery model. The consultants say they've completed a culture and climate survey to hear concerns from staff at these facilities. The full results are set to be released next week. Their overall assessment should be completed around October. 
Also at Monday's hearing, the committee moved forward with a proposed bill for the next legislative session. It would prevent people from being committed to the Montana State Hospital for a primary diagnosis of Alzheimer's disease, dementia, or traumatic brain injury, unless it's believed they're at an immediate risk of harming themselves or others. In Helena, Jonathan Amberian, MTN News. The hearing included an update on staffing at the state prison. Montana's Department of Corrections director says positions are being filled up from 20% staff to 31%. The prison moved from eight hour shifts to 12 hour shifts and reduced in-person visitation for inmates. However, lawmakers also took time to point out a misuse of money from the state's inmate welfare fund. I've already made the commitment that I'm gonna get in House Bill 2, that money be repaid to the inmate welfare fund because if you take something that's not yours illegally, that money should be put back. An audit of the fund showed some DOC facilities use the money to pay for basic hygiene items for some impoverished people in the prison. Authorities are searching for answers this morning after almost 50 migrants were found dead inside a tractor trailer in San Antonio. Three people are in custody, though police say it's unclear if they're connected with the incident. CBS's Ken Molestina brings us the details. San Antonio police say a city worker helped uncover the gruesome scene after hearing a cry for help near a tractor trailer on a remote back road. Officers say the worker looked inside the trailer and found a number of dead bodies. We have processed approximately 46 bodies that have been triaged and tagged and uh, declared deceased at this time. We're not supposed to open up a truck and see stacks of bodies in there. Um, none of us come to work imagining that. The incident appears to be the latest and one of the deadliest in decades involving people trying to cross the border from Mexico. The plight of migrants Seeking refuge is always a humanitarian crisis, but tonight we are dealing with a horrific human tragedy. Four children were among 16 people rescued and taken to area hospitals with heat related injuries. Authorities say they were hot to the touch and dehydrated with no signs of water in the trailer. If it's 100 outside, it goes for about 125 degrees inside without water, without air, without nothing. It's, it's ridiculous. I just. I just can't understand how drivers can do that. Police say they may conduct another canine search in the nearby woods today just to be sure there are no additional bodies. Ken Molestina, CBS News, San Antonio, Texas. The fire chief says all the people found dead in the rig were adults, a mix of both men and women. At least three people are dead after an Amtrak train hit a dump truck in rural Missouri. Federal investigators are there today trying to figure out what happened. The train was traveling from Los Angeles to Chicago when it hit the truck at an uncontrolled crossing. This is the third deadly Amtrak incident in less than a year. Just this past Sunday, a passenger train struck a car on a rail crossing in Northern California three people died and last September an Amtrak derailment 20 miles from Haver killed three people. It costs an arm and a leg to fill up your vehicle with gas, but now you may also be spending more money to get your car repaired. Reporter Kat Sandoval explains. Auto body shops are busy. Most of the people I know in the industry right now have really had an influx in the last year or more. With inflation affecting the cost of new and used cars. It just takes a long time. We've, we've, we've had some cars taken three, four months just to get parts. More folks are trying to make their old cars last longer. But at repair shops like West Valley Collision in suburban Salt Lake City, They're probably going to be having to wait. There's a supply chain related shortage of parts tapping the brakes on getting cars fixed. I know it's not nice driving around a, you know, a damaged vehicle, but sometimes that's what we have to do in, in, in these scenarios right now. So what are the main problems? It's airbags, airbags and airbag modules. I'm pretty sure we will not be able to get that airbag right there. Seat belts, you'd be surprised, little brackets that you should just easily be able to get. We've had issues with that. In Nashville, body shop owner Charles Childress says shortages are across the industry. It's been anywhere from a door handle, a mirror, a door. Honda, I've had to wait about three months for a couple of things. Jaguar, I waited about six months for one piece. Some repair shops are using used parts to fix cars, which can work in some cases like body repair. But in Las Vegas, shop manager Jim Robbins warns against reusing more sophisticated parts. 
it's computers for the cars you need any of those and they're hard to get a hold of um, a lot of them are aftermarket now that people are pulling out of used rigs which i wouldn't suggest using at all robin says the backlog can be maddening for everyone involved car owners and the repair shops it makes it frustrating for us and the customers. I mean, if you bring your car in to get it fixed and you're, you're you know, somebody's telling you, I can't fix your car for several months, that's a bit disconcerting. Moody's analytics say the average monthly car payment is now a little over $700. But to keep your current car running, AAA has some tips, including following the maintenance schedule in your owner's manual, keeping your tire pressure up, and parking your car in the shade if you can. That'll make it easier on your air conditioner. Kat Sandoval, Newsy, Chicago. And now to the latest on the war in Ukraine. More than a dozen civilians are dead and dozens more hurt after Russian forces bombed a crowded shopping mall. Thick black smoke billowed from the building in the central city of Kremenchuk. This attack comes just one day after a barrage of rockets hit a kindergarten playground and apartment complex in Kyiv. Now, leaders of the G7 countries meeting in the German Alps are pledging even more retribution against the Kremlin. And this week, NATO allies will decide to increase the size of a rapid reaction force. The rapid reaction force is made up of troops from NATO countries that can deploy quickly when needed. There are currently 40,000 troops in the force. NATO countries will agree to raise that number to 300,000. NATO Secretary General says these troops will train together with home defense forces and can respond swiftly and smoothly to any emergency. A Fromberg craftsman's career washed away in the flood. Rich Holstein was already on the verge of calling it quits due to health reasons, but he never expected decades of work to end like this. Q2's Haley Monaco has more. After building furniture and picture frames from the wood floors that he tore out of the Old Faithful Inn in Yellowstone National Park for 20 years, Rich Holstein now has no choice but to be done with his beloved career. The end of the old faithful in picture frames was going to happen. It was already in the process. But the floods of 2022 in Fromberg have made what was left of the wood float down the river. Holstein showed MTN Here's News the, the wood. remaining wood left outside of his home in Fromberg Thursday. All that remains of the old faithful in wood is two garbage cans full of wood. Holstein was in the hospital for an infection when the flooding occurred and had no way to protect the decades old wood. He immediately knew all of it was gone. To have it end like this, I am literally numb right now. Holstein plans to use the little wood that is left to create the last of the picture frames. In Fromberg, Haley Monaco, MTN News.